Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Innovating Teams webinar. This probably feels drastically different than anything we've done in the past, and I'm very excited to say I've personally upgraded my office to become this incredible podcast studio that you see here. For those of you that are eagle-eyed, that watch our webinars, you know that I may drink uh, a water can, um, and there's a sticker on the water can, and I have my own dedicated camera now for that sticker. Cool. We call it the LDC Liquid Death Cam. If we can cut to that real quick. There it is. <laughs> there it is live. Liquid Death Mountain Water, everyone. Um, for those of you that watch the Innovating Teams webinar, you know this is a departure, but it's a great thing because I am actually at the NOV offices, a little bit further outside of Houston than I expected, to be bit. honest with you. The road ran out of road. Mm. And I'm here. That's who, That's who he is. And David That's Reed true. is the and the chief technology officer. That's true. At the same time. At the same time. For, and I faded, same time. I faded like a Thanos snap into this different transition. This is truly wild. Thanos snap. David, hello and welcome to Innovating Teams. Welcome to our studio. This is unbelievable. Free. This is unbelievable. Yeah. What As a you bargain. can tell, I'm very excited about it's this. It's kind of cool. So I wanted to. Actually, I would like you to introduce yourself to our audiences because I have to get into the idea that you are not two physically different people working two different roles. You are one person mm. working two roles that are typically separate. Separate. And don't like each other, people think. That's exactly why I want to talk about this because oh. I've actually had conversations with people about this event today, this webinar. Event. I think it's an event. It is an event. It's the ultimate event. Yeah. Um, we don't need to talk about Logan Paul doing WWE. We talk about this. This, this is what is we're it. here to do. This is it. And that distinction between those two different groups usually being at odds, how do you sleep at night? Uh, well, um, I have one of those adjustable beds. It's quite Does nice. Does that make it easier? No, oh, there's a number. It makes you feel like it's what's special. Your, what's, what's the number for you? Uh, 34. It's kind of soft. I really hope that it, that's the actual number. So everyone, I hope that you've gotten a chance to jump in. We usually don't get started until a few minutes in, and now we're a few minutes in. And we're, we're happening. David. Yeah. Give us a little bit of your background. I'd like to know your entire life story. Where were you born? Oh, it was, uh, it was a house, actually, um, that they called a hospital. It was on the, above the front door on the left of that house at Queen's Cross in Aberdeen. And now you're here at NOV. And yeah, straight into NOV from there. So they were waiting um, and they, they cut the cord and I, I cried and they put me straight in. Um, of course, we didn't exist back then. So um, yeah, so Aberdeen, Scotland, uh, which is the home place of the color gray. We invented that. Um, <laughs> It's incredible. The buildings are uh, granite and <laughs> the sky is always gray and th there's colors you just can't quite tell because yep. it's pretty rainy. Yeah, so do that's where glasses, I'm from. Do the glasses help with the, the kind of giving you the ability to see color better? Or is no, it... I, when I went to Norway, I was like the happiest man on earth because they paint their buildings and had used bright colors. And I was like, what is this? I've heard their grass is green there. Yeah, our, our grass is green. We used to have a rumor that America had brown grass, and we'd all say it's not true, not That's possible. That's amazing. Because we'd never seen brown grass. We'd never heard of such a thing. Like, how could it be brown? Yeah, it's either we green or gray. Yeah, we didn't know another color. We didn't think that the rain was helping. We just, it was very green. Very, It's a beautiful place. Nice to visit. Hard to live. Understood. That's that's a tagline for a book at some point in time. <laughs> um, I'd like to know a little bit more about your your experience in the in the workplace you've worked for nov for 30 years 30 years in the varco part the v so yeah i, I joined varco i, I was what brought um, you here what 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 was the reason why you, gosh, you so joined? hard not to say airplane um it, it was brought me An here airplane. to not a boat <laughs> no no it, it, that was just, nah, never mind they um <laughs> we um it was weird because I, I i was in an oil town it's an oil town okay and uh, I did not want to work in oil and gas, particularly. I was kind of playing in goth bands. That was more my thing. This is the most incredible conversation I've ever had. Ever? You need to get out. I do. I do. I'm stuck in my house a lot. <laughs> so. so I was, yeah, that I thought I'd play music. And I, I did college, mostly kind of. I, I, I dropped out of one college. Yeah. I don't tell that very often, but I did. Because I was playing in a band, and we were going to be famous. So that was my direction, I thought. And um, and then re-entered college again, got myself back in, 
And uh, it was actually I got a temporary job in BP, which was funny, mm. over the summer. And all I was worried about was listening to studio mixes or live concerts. And uh, a guy took me aside and kind of went, there's more to you. Like, you need, you need to do other things. You don't need to get locked up in this music thing. And I didn't like him very much at the time, but it did play in my brain. And finally, I went, ah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try college again. So did did I had been in kind of architectural field. Okay. So I did that, um, and met my wife from California in Scotland. And then we, uh, you know, Californians wandering around. They're like, why is this place so gray? She, yeah, that's what they the say. The grass in California is brown. They like to come in the summer for the week that it's sunny. And the one, like, yeah. Full seven days. Yeah, and they and just go, that's it. what are you talking about? This is great. We love it here. Yeah. You're seven, so cute. Seven keep, days. Keep saying that thing you say. It's so cute. Anyway, so American wife, yeah. Yeah. So we we got married in Scotland and then went to L.A., where she was from. Went to Northern California. That We we dated up in Northern California. And then came back to Aberdeen. I convinced her that I didn't like being in the States that much mm. and that we should be there, which didn't go well. No. Um, I worked for an architect for a couple of weeks, and then they fired me. Um, that was a good piece of information. Yeah. <laughs> I later learned they were probably getting a young person's design view for a project because they, the, what I proposed, they built. So I was like, hmm. Interesting. We can unpack that later on. It's a long story. We can but, unpack that. But later. anyway, so I was just needed work. We had yeah. a six-month-old child, and I was like, I like to be able to live so someone offered me a job in baker hughes which was oil and gas yeah and you've a been a temporary job for a year and then i met someone from varco told them some of my background they were a california corporation trying to work with scottish people i was a scottish person who'd lived in california they thought i could help in the repair shop it's amazing now wild so i went in the repair shop and helped them repair things I didn't repair anything. I was you repaired really, nothing really bad. Shop. I was really bad. I repaired people and culture. That's what okay, I repaired. Okay, let's talk about that. So, so, how did you get a chance to be the which which came first, the the CMO position or the CTO position? In my behavior, the CTO position, but I didn't get that first. I got marketing first. I just got sales first. That had marketing. Okay. Um, and I'd, I'd always kind of dabbled in marketing, but it wasn't traditional. It was more, um, once I got to California, the company really helped me understand that I was good at seeing where the company should go. Mm. I had good insights on markets and technology and very strong opinions for a young man. And they, they encouraged that, which didn't happen in Scotland. I didn't get a lot of any feedback. You just be glad you got a job and go home. And right. it's pretty, it's a very kind of just do your job environment and live for the weekend. And uh, so, yeah, so they were really like deeply into the psychology of human beings and how people mm. thought and felt and culture. And so they spent a lot of time with me and it was really helpful. So I, I always had marketing on the side, which was just something that we did. We didn't actually have any marketing department back then. So we would just do it as a side hustle, but I was also working on designing drilling rigs. So that was technical. And a lot of the large uh, robotic driven rigs that got built were kind of my baby back then. So we were designing these giant robots. And so I really got into that. Um, so the design of drilling rigs has kind of was the majority of my career was yeah. going out and dreaming it up. And once I became the guy who knew the stuff, right. I had to travel the world and see everybody who was thinking about building these things. So I, I got very involved in that and got involved in the strategy that became what made the company, which was integrating all the pieces, mm. which was my thesis in college about construction, was that London was being built by American companies to integrating better and, and having a more holistic view of how they did business. Mm. So I took that over and kind of applied it, and we were buying companies. We're a, we're a high-volume buying company. We buy, on average, a company a month. So we're constantly gathering them in. So I had that technical side and the marketing side so i always tell people it is who i am i am kind of technology driven and market driven yeah so i had marketing and um i, I constantly messed with the technology i constantly was pushing us to new stuff asking hard questions and i was very integrated because of having been close to the products and i'm, I'm pretty add which is a good gift to have when most people are engineers because they 
they go deep into subjects. They're more OCD. They're like yeah. they're driving into. And you're like squirrel. Yeah, uh, but but it squirrel. means I can go. We're buying what? Oh, we bought this, uh, and I would and like connect the dots exactly. Yeah. So more of the architecture brain was 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 more useful. So yeah, that that's that's the best way of describing it. It is weird. That's I don't. Amazing, yeah. I don't. People think CTO is also the IT side. I don't right. do anything in that space. Yeah. My boss always says, password. "You you manage the artists. That's what you do." So. And the artists include technologists. Technology and marketing. Yeah, they're inventors. They're they're Both artists. Both sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. And I think that for those of you that are watching, yes, this is the Innovating Teams webinar. <laughs> but we got a production budget upgrade. Thank you all so much uh, yeah. for your your Patreon donations. We don't have a Patreon. <laughs> um, but I do want to say for those of you that are watching live, we do still have the ability to throw questions and, and comments and emotional outbursts regarding this webinar. Only. This webinar only. Um, if you wanted to do that, our producer Maggie and producer Shelby, can we get to the producer mm -hmm. Shelby camera quick? Oh yeah. That's oh. producer Shelby. That is not <laughs> coffee. That is tea. That is in that tea. Right. We had this discussion. Um, producer Shelby will be helping if any questions or comments mm -hmm. do come through because we want to make it interactive and engaging. Yeah, um, absolutely. We did get one comment from, it looks like Tanya on LinkedIn. Uh, they said, witty repartee on fire. I witty to repartee that. on witty fire. Witty repartee on fire. That's actually my band name. Wow. Oh, witty wow. Repartee what a fire. coincidence. I'm actually a fan. I didn't even fan, know you yeah. were in that band. It's incredible. It's, I'm, I'm, str I'm not streaming on Spotify yet. Okay. I haven't figured out how to do that. Yeah, um <laughs> I want to ask you the, the one pressing question in my mind just as you're one. talking through this. Mm -hmm. There's literally just one. Just one. Let's hear it. Are you still playing I, music? Yeah. Are you still in a band? No. My, but my kids and my, my wife was a singer-songwriter. My daughter teaches and we have instruments everywhere. You got to keep it in the family. Yeah, they're all good. Like my, cause, <coughs> sorry, my, my wife is, um, is a, was a writer. She doesn't write that much anymore. Mm. But my kids are both really good songwriters, and awesome. um, it's it's kind of a sad like they're really good, but they don't love the business, so they they it's can passion. do it. Yeah, they and that's really. It. Well, my son is. I mean, he's a social media dude. He makes all his money off of being followed by lots of people. But interesting. But my daughter has like a sneaky hit in 2015 and doesn't want to talk about it. She's you know? she's running up that hill, and eventually, in wow. you know 20 or so years, 30 years. Stranger Things season 36 Wow, will take that to new heights. That's amazing. That's Isn't a that beautiful incredible? thing. You should be in a band. Thank you so much. So I, I play a little bit. I, I like playing. I, I kind of got in, I, I theme, you know, I theme mm. through a subject, like a, an art medium or, a, or photography or, and so I kind of had a bass thing going on for a while, electric and double bass, which double bass was a lot of fun so i don't know why it became a thing but, yeah. but i'm really more a guitar player and in a band i played keyboards i'm horrible at it but that was the style back then absolutely was it a keytar could it have been a keytar no it wasn't it, it wasn't. should have been a keytar we went I like to see to howard jones he Give, had a keytar giving you some exciting. some retro retrospective feedback is you should have played a keytar should have we um, were we were kind of a goth band it's that's there's incredible no, there's no keytar happening there i i want to i actually want to like pivot a little bit and you mentioned that there were people that were very direct with you yeah. throughout your career, right? Yeah. Those moments in time mm. that there were people that said, there's more to you than this. Changed everything. Right? Mm. I want to talk about leadership mm. and how you are working and functioning as a leader of people mm. and, and maybe even start from that one moment where that person gave you that feedback and how did that, did that change the way you looked at culture and and people and it, it all has that did. inspired anything it all did I, I there was something in me so that when i got to california that was really helpful because i think when i first started working for the company i did a trip to malta for an offshore job and i remember writing down things about who the company was what it, what they were about the culture stuff and and like i'm going to measure for equipment on a you know there's no reason i should be doing this right but I didn't know why I was doing that. And it wasn't until I got to California and the senior leadership sat me down and said, you're really bad at these things. They're and just I, that direct with you. Yeah. They're like, yeah. you're like horrible. Everyone <laughs> can do this, but you're really bad. And I'm thinking, why am I I'm, here? I'm from Scotland. So I'm like, so just fire me. Right. Don't give me a chance. Right. And then he, and then he went, but what you're good at, we have two people in the company can do that, that and they're okay. in senior positions. And I okay. was like, I didn't even know how to cope with that information. So um, they were really good, 
coaches. I've gone back and thanked them for mentorship and coaching, and they all laugh and go, that's a horrible word. Where did you get that? Did they even know that, that that's no, how they were No, operating? they were really sad about it when they said, what are the people telling you that's mentorship? We were friends. Mm. We were just talking. You were good. You were talented. We got stuff out of you. You got stuff. I mean, they were so... Like, they had rules in the company that were way ahead of their time. They trusted people big time. Wow. Um, there was no, nobody was allowed to have a desk that someone would be on the other side of because of what that did psychologically. You had to have it up against the wall. No one was allowed to be called a superior or a boss or the, none of that language. So they had all these rules that were really people-centric. Where did they come from? Where did, that, where did you think They're humans. Rules? They're humans. Yeah. That's a good place to start. I mean, I that's guess. where they came from. They were Earth, Earth people. But, but they um, <laughs> came from Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a few moments. No, uh, but they, I know I was, I was trying to bring you along there. That was very but good. Thank you. Yeah, um, I appreciate that. They, um, I asked them. We actually went back with our team here, and we went back and asked one of the old CEOs because it didn't make sense. They weren't those kind of people. They, the guy was a brilliant engineer, but wasn't that great with humans. Mm. So I, I, we did ask. You know, what, why? How did you do that? What was the where did where? And they had a consultant who had come in and taught them. He was a German guy, and he would kind of taught them, um, you know, to think differently. And I have, if I remember, they talked about having a moral obligation to grow the company for people, and it, it created this people-centric view. Yeah, and uh, it was it was it was amazing. I I just I can't say enough how, how good that was for us. And we got bought and we were owned by different management structures and systems. And so then I had to learn how to influence people to stick with what I'd grown up with in the company. So how did you do that? How did you, um, how did you switch between mergers and acquisitions and different, different completely different cultures, backgrounds, yeah, belief yeah, systems, yeah. all of that integrating and weaving into what you have? How do you protect that or yeah. invite people in to, to do something different? It's uh um well in the in the merging of companies and bringing companies in I think we're quite good at that because we all came from small companies so there's no we're a big company that feels like a small company. Interesting. So that managing that culture, but I, I learned there were dark parts of the company like there are people we would bring in and they came from very dark backgrounds and a lot of command and control and dark as in non-human centric ways of working or right. the old way. The old way. It was the old way. Is yeah. that it was all power and it was all about, you know. Authority, yeah. Yeah, using that power and wielding it and getting people to do what you want. And I kind of developed my own theories. And so uh, uh, there was a certain job I had where I was in uh, a leadership development class and I was on the teaching side. Mm -hmm. I wasn't teaching, but I was part of the, the group. And they asked me, you know, what do you think of the course? And I was like, this is a management course not a leadership course. And they're mm -hmm. like, what do you mean? And I had started ranting, <laughs> as I do. And they said, okay, stop. Take that and go in front of the class. We were in a side room. And so I stood up and started talking. Yeah. And it was the beginning where other people really started to help me from that course. They were like, you need to stop using PowerPoint. You need to just talk like you did there. In fact, we will, this was at Purdue University. They said, we'll use you as a closer for a conference if you promise us you won't use PowerPoint and you talk for an hour just off the cuff. And I was like, I, I don't know if I can do that. They're like, we know you can do that. And so it was the beginning of um, people were moved by that speech. And um, we started working in that program. I started working developing my how do you get leaders to grow well? And mm. this was all middle leadership, so they were all moving up. Right. And so it was a great place for forming. When you get leaders who make it to the top, it's really hard to change them because everything worked. So you can adapt a little bit. Yeah, so there's, there's no need. it's their formula. Yeah, the cushion is set. The so is there. getting leadership in the middle was great. And, and so I started to really develop those theories and out and telling those stories, mostly by giving like blank sections of time to talk. Like, yeah. but, but, but I would talk on subjects. Turned out I had a lot to talk about that had been put in me by people over years. Um, so I really enjoyed that. It was really fun. People were moved. You know, we got feedback from families, from employers, employees, uh, you know, peers. Everybody would talk about the life change that was happening and people who were going through this course. So, mm. so it really helped me to know I can change the leaders that are coming. I can't change the leaders who are. And so I did that for maybe 10 years. We did a lot of that. Wow. and it, it affected a lot. How do you, I guess the, the way I want to kind of start this conversation, because we've got 40 minutes. Only right 40 left. minutes, you better run. 
How do we do it? Fast. Um, fast. Yeah. I, I want to, I want to dive into some of those topics. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to, I want you to, obviously we don't have enough time to go, you know, as far right. as we can, but for our audience, for the folks out there who are in leadership positions, mm -hmm. most of the time in the middle management zone, right. you know, the term frozen middle has been thrown around a lot. It's the best place to be, I think. It's absolutely the best because you can influence up, down, and sideways, mm -hmm. right? And so we recognize the value. Yeah. Getting people to do things when they don't work for you is the most important skill to have. Okay. Before. Break that down real quick because that was gold. Um, and they did it to me in Orange when I, in California. They were just like, we're going to give you no employees. We'd like you to change the company. You know, you're well, like, yeah. uh, no, I need employees. You know, yeah. I, I need people to do what I say. And it was really, I didn't know that I could do this. And early on, I started having meetings. People would turn up and they'd say, see, people come to your meetings. Like, they don't have to. A lot of people have meetings and people don't come. It's a fair but point. But you're having influence. And they were really good at helping me see things that I couldn't see. Yeah. Um, but, but learning to inspire people. Um, so you have to kind of have a vision of where you're going. You have to share that vision. You have to get people excited. Um, and when, when people sense that, it took me a while after that to learn I'm the person who has to speak right now in this group because I would always didn't like people who spoke too much or loved themselves or seemed like self-interested leaders. And so I didn't want to be them. So I tended on the quiet side in rooms. And I had a boss who go, why didn't you speak up? And they got me to speak up more. That's not who you are, though. You're, not, you're, you're usually not the quiet one, right? And like if you brought I, your I, full I, self to yeah. an environment, to an experience. I, I have a lot of introversion. You do? Yeah. Okay. I have a lot of that. I have to, I've had to fight against that. Yes. How do, so, you, how do you fight against that when it's your responsibility to not be that? It's my, I, to not be... To not be as introverted, like to, to be the oh, person right. to speak up. How do you, well, it's how do you push of past purpose. that introversion? It, it, yeah. was, it was actually a counselor who told me who kind of... I, I eventually took me a long time to ever go see anybody for help. But, but this lady who was not the subject but said... Um, you know, you talk at the time I was starting to be asked to speak in public. And she says, when you speak in public, you talk in two ways. You talk as if you're ashamed uh, that you do it. And then you talk like you're really proud that you do it. And I was like, that's embarrassing. That's exactly how I feel. And um, she said, none of those emotions matter. You do it because you're made to do it. So do it. Don't be better or worse than anybody. Do it because it's your thing you bring to the table. Just do it. And so I started saying yes to everything, which is why we're talking now, is I yeah. just say yes to speaking and to interviews and to whatever. Yeah, she stole and that from Nike, though, so I'm kind did of... Did she? Yeah, just do it. That was what they said? Did, or did Nike take that from her? I thought it was just don't. Wait, are you <laughs> buying off-brand Nike? Is that what's going on? <laughs> Maybe that's why that's I got what it, it is. for twenty. Nike is what it is. It's ah, the knockoff version. Yeah, yeah, we don't buy Nike. Okay. Um, have you struggled with imposter syndrome? Um, more earlier, I've done better after that conversation. I've done better on, because I think a lot of imposter syndrome, I mean, it's, everyone suffers from it. That's not a, everyone has that. But, but I've learned to be a lot more comfortable in, in purpose. Like I'm made for something. I'm not better or worse. That, that thinking, uh, when I first started working for the CEO, I had a huge pressure, like couldn't sleep, felt why on earth, how did I get here? I, I felt way too much pressure. And I remember telling him, he's like, how's it going? And I'm like, I can't sleep Bad. at night. And he goes, good, we don't pay you to sleep at night. Wow. And um, yeah. he was a bit of that old style. I like and that. I was like, hmm, thanks. But I, I have a, a couple of my friends are kind of life coachy people, and uh, which sucks, but is good. So they're, but they're great people, but they have like on their business card, it says life coach and you're disappointed. No, they're great people who will intervene in your life whether you want them to or not. Mm, it's not on their business card, but they It do. is on their business card. That's it's what also they, it's, on their it's, business it's card? It's what they do, yeah. Producer Shelby, how do we feel about that? I mean, I like it. I'm all for it. It's <laughs> on the business Produ card. Producer Shelby is one of those life coaches. Yeah. Yeah, she's a life coach. <laughs> no, really but good. it's um, they're good friends to have because they, they, you need intervention all the time. You need people talking and asking hard questions who know you well. Yeah, you know, so in that they they probably pushed me through a lot in that time, because I had to start going. I was made for this, and I didn't think I was. How did you, how did you finally, release yourself from that self-contained prison of? of um, I I did I did actually start saying more positive things, which I'm not a positive thinking fan. 
Yeah. Um, but but people, when that, people right? asked me, how the are you doing? The power of positive thinking, right? Is, yeah, I'm not a fan. But okay. that's, the, uh, um, that's a whole long... But, but we it don't kind of worked for you. We time. do not have time for that. But, but no, but it was a truth that I, I had not come to see that other people saw in me. So I had to hold on to it, that I was made for this. And the more I said it, the more I go, I kind of was made for this. Because there was tons of politics mm. at that time in the leadership team. And people were really trying to intimidate. There's a lot of that old brand right. behavior. And people would come up and say, we're watching you. Or, wow. Yeah, we're, we're not so sure about you yet. Oh, my and, gosh. And I would be like. That just feeds the imposter syndrome. That, well, that... so what I'd say is, well, I'm watching you. Okay. <laughs> and they'd be like. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> they weren't ready for it. They were Because it was a little club, and they all kind of had ranches next to each other, and I was not a part of any of that. And even yeah. when I, the CEO chose me, I wasn't a part of any of it. They all had a bunch of friends who all hung out, and they were all kind of Americans. I was not. I just didn't fit. Yeah. I, was, I moved into a corporate office, didn't set up a desk, just had chairs like this and a coffee machine and a record player. And they'd mm -hmm. all be like, what are you doing? You know? And I'm like, what are you doing? Do, <laughs> do, you, just, do you think I'm that you're you. doing work at a laptop right now? We talk to people. That's what we do. We don't work at, at screens. I mean, if I do, I'll take a laptop. I'm, I'd rather go to a Starbucks, and you don't want me doing the work I do at a Starbucks, so I brought the Starbucks here. So I'm, I was probably different. How, when you, let's go back to um, when you spent that decade or so um, teaching and mm. leading in that kind of capacity yeah. as facilitator and teacher. Mm. What were some of those things that you would bring to middle managers? What were some of those, those kind of perspectives mostly, that would help them? Mostly first self-evaluation and, yep. and learning how to hear what you don't hear from others. It becomes like having the friends I had. Yeah. I started bringing that to people. Like you need to hear other information about yourself than what you think. That's self-awareness right there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come from just your own understanding no. of self. No, it's not. I, and, and it starts at home, which was probably most of these people were driving hard careers at the time. And we kicked people out of the class. If, like some of them were so busy doing big deals like that they wouldn't come. And like, then you're out. And everyone, you can't kick them out. They're, they're superstars. I'm like, are they? But, but then they would change. And the change was amazing because they were like dead human beings. Yeah. You just know, they zombies, were just working right? and just succeeding, but not alive. What, what, is, what is success? Being alive is success. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, it is. That's pretty good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I like to think that love is a business strategy. I just wanted to throw I that I think in. love is a business strategy. Ooh, and David's to... like, is it all around? Kind of. If you haven't bought the book, book, this changed my life. He, David, I've never read it. But David hasn't read it. It's and a his gift. His last name is Reed, and David, it, his middle David name is Doesn't. Doesn't. So David, David doesn't read. read. That's exactly who I am. It's unbelievable. I don't know how I got there, but anyway, they, that, that process, there's a lot of different components. I actually started teaching it outside. Um, so we do conscious leadership um, mm. in Houston. We've, we're on class two coming. But that's, I actually found a, um, a PhD in, in human behavior. Mm -hmm. So she's been awesome because I'm like, this is kind of the theory I have. And you she goes, well, here's be. the science. Yes, and I was like, yes. oh, my goodness. You need to have validation yeah, on the yeah, other yeah. side. It's, right. really, it's really a fun thing. But, yeah. yeah, we do. So we've started teaching it to the world, yeah. which is a good thing, you know, just offering it up to people. Because I think, uh, I think it's, and we're doing three classes, but it, it's, it's probably 10, 20 classes. It's, yeah. It's a lot to go through, but it starts at yourself and then it goes into how you work with those around you. Mm. Input from family is always, or friends, are, is critical for everybody because they're telling you the truth that you don't want to hear. And uh, that's, that's kind of learning how to hear that. Yeah. That's a safe place for you that's designed to grow you. It's amazing. And that's how you get better humans is when they live better at home and they work less hours because they're compensating for all sorts of issues. You know, so, we, we started to do a trial of four day work weeks. Hmm. And what we realized as we started this, and it was, I think in March of this year, hmm. we began just to practice, just to try it, see what happens. Yeah. We're very experimental when it comes to our work environment hmm. and we're all work from home. So it's even more experimental at this moment right. when people are starting to come back to the office. Yeah. And it was interesting because what we recognized was all of the issues that we actually saw as hmm. a result of the four day work week wasn't because of a four-day work week. Yeah. There were issues that we needed to solve. Right. That would have been that were there 
during five day work weeks. Mm. And all of it was behavioral. It was communication. Yeah, yeah. It was how we engage with each other, how we engage with our clients, how we communicate effectively and appropriately. Right. It was those things. Uh, hearing people, and I think learning those skills. Exactly. And so uh, we, we, yeah. pushed, we pushed back in the office for the purpose of we need it. Like we, we, we introverts need people who, you know, will draw us out of our shell and yeah. we need to be forcing people into their shells who are too noisy because they, they need that. Mm. It's the broccoli we all have to eat. You With know? the brownies. The brownies are after. But. Yeah, or you could just mix the broccoli into the brownies. <laughs> I don't recommend it. I, I wouldn't. I don't recommend but it. but what know. I do recommend is if we just cut to the LDC, um, yeah. Liquid Death Mountain Water. Um, this is not sponsored by Liquid Death in any it's way. It's not, this is but just, if they wanted to. There's just a sticker on here. If you're thing. them, I'm thinking give you something. Yeah, absolutely. A small token. I want to I wanna talk about how important behavior is inside of the workplace and the role that Act, that behavior has on building or destroying culture? Well, behavior is a fruit. It's not a root. So fruits are, fruits are outcomes that, yep. that, that we don't, we like to hide bad things, you know? So sometimes you see it, but people get taught to hide bad fruit as opposed to wonder why, mm. what in the system, because it's, it, it spreads. I mean, bad things spread, but, but the hard part with work is the, Bad behaviors or, or things that aren't working, being aware of them, trying to change them, yes, people should do that. Sometimes it's beyond work. So there's there's a line there that you should never cross that, that people have to deal with on their own. Right. And sometimes you can't solve it. So, so behavior issues, I mean, everyone has, for example, they're a behavior they do at work, which is regressive. So mm. it'd be anger, sadness, feeling out, out of the group, whatever it would be, and it's got nothing to do with work, and and it's got a lot to do with something that happened in your life. But you turn to that age. Anger is always a young age thing. So so someone gets angry or someone gets depressed is the other side of anger. Right. But either way, it's cause of something that got said that we can't control. Like we can't control what happened to you growing up, but it's there. So it's a really interesting dynamic with how do you deal with that? How do you deal with people and and that stuff? So I spend a lot of time watching people with my leadership team, not in a creepy way, but just trying, yeah. how are they doing? And what can we help with and what can't we help with? And are they in the right place? And I think that's probably more important. The more you focus on getting people to their happy place, like what makes you really happy yeah. and adjusting the work around that um, is how great things happen. So you, you mm. tend to, but, but along the way, when you build trust and you help people and you grow people, the the behavioral things that are an issue you get to talk about yeah because there's trust and that's there's comfort true once and you build but, that but if you just go straight for we're going to just correct everyone who's got doing something wrong um it just doesn't work so you have to kind of start at a holistic view of this is who we are this is what we're about now you might not fit there so we have some who don't fit yeah and and i i usually help them to find something else in a very positive way, mm -hmm. like they should find something else if it's not fitting and not working. But, um, but I, I, it is a, it's, a, it's an observation thing. It's, I mean, self awareness is important, but it's, it's a journey, and you can't make anyone do anything. So you have to understand it's all about influence. Yeah, it's all about care and connecting to people, and um, that's I, I sit in and on my direct reports reviews with their reports. And that's purposeful, more to, I'm, I'm quite good at the growing of people stuff and observing. So I'll sit in and I'll add that. You're to sitting the mix. in like a, like a corner. Yeah. Like awkwardly, awkwardly in the fog. It's, it's the Scottish actually, fog. Actually, they don't it. know I'm there. There's a, yeah. a two way mirror. There's a that's, curtain. That's the way. And then I have a mic that I'll just add. No, don't Can you touch repeat that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Step away from the desk. Yeah. And they're could, like, could you, David's could, here? Yeah, exactly. No, it's really, it's very comfortable. And I, I work hard to make sure those are comfortable places. If I did a review, I would choose a coffee shop more than I would yeah. an office because the more people are relaxed, the more they're, they're not uptight and worried about, you know, am I in trouble or not, you know, which is what most reviews feel like. I hope I'm good. And, and that's not what you want. Yeah. It's not a scorecard. It's a, how are we doing? You know, what's the best thing for you? And most of those other things work out, you know, when you build the relationship. It's amazing. And that's true. Relationships are what matter most. 
Right. And Thanks. the further you can, the further you, <laughs> I'm glad it's true. That's so true for me at yeah. least. No, I but know it is. It's the depth of relationship opens up so much. Yeah. Uh, it's people. work. I mean, for some people it's work for some, it's natural, but, but when yeah. it's work for you, you, you have to do the work. What about people who say that none of that matters? Do the job. Yeah. Then they can go somewhere else. Fair. Yeah. Cause there's places love that. There are places yeah. that are fans of that. Yeah. Even way like to work. you love politics. Sure. There's places yeah. love that. Not here. We don't, we don't, we don't do that in our family. That's the, <laughs> that's the way you need to get the message. This is who we're going to be. You can join in that. And that, that's what I usually, you know, I've had people who are, we're a very service or oriented group. And I've had people who are like, I just want to show them, you know, you're like, have you ever thought about legal? You know, have you ever, <laughs> have you ever you thought really about like someone? there are groups in the company that love this. Yeah. Um, but but not here, you know. So I've had those conversations. And yeah, you, and those. And that, those one, are the not one, easy. that one conversation I'm thinking of, the person said, "Oh, don't say that. My whole family are lawyers." And you're like, "Yeah, I, I can, can see it. I can tell. <laughs> it shows." Like, so that's okay. It doesn't. No one's really wrong. I mean, there there are there are bad behaviors that are deep issues, and that's people mm -hmm. have to deal with that in their own time, in their own space. You can ask them to consider that. Right. But it's none of your business. Yeah. Um, what that is, personal issues. But outside of that, just performance and what you love, when you talk to people about what they love, you will find really happy people just doing what they love and, and growing that and, and doing the the broccoli eating that they have to do, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm a three food group guy. I, I understand. You got tea, no <laughs> broccoli. What's the third the thing? Third. No, you've got just what kidding. you like. I usually say steak because I like steak. Fair enough. Sorry if you don't eat steak. But but steak, I love to have it. But my mom's making me eat the broccoli because it's good for you. Of course. And then there's like the peanut food group where I'm allergic. And so in work, oh, okay, people have things they're they're thinking it's broccoli and they're stuffing peanuts in their system and they're flaring up and almost killing themselves. And it's like, how about no peanuts? Yeah. That was the first conversation with me where you're really horrible at these things. Mm. Everything in me was like, I'm going to show you. And they're like, no, please don't. I'm going to double down on the please thing. Please never at. do that work. Yeah. And I was like, also you're not fired. Wait, never do that. I mean, it was like being a kid and being told it's ice cream every day for dinner. You're like, is yes. it? Yes. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. They're like, you need to do creative, forward thinking. And I was like, really? And, and never do an expense report. Like, uh, I, I was horrible. Like, I, I've never filed. I haven't handled paper in 20 years. It's incredible. Like, I'm really dysfunctional at things that people are great at. Normal people can do all day long. Mm. And it could be shaming. I'm terrible at English. Okay. And like the idioms or just what's that? Idioms like American no, idioms or uh, just just writing and oh, okay. reading and Fair you know David Reed. So David the, um, doesn't read. David doesn't read. I'm looking, exactly. at, I'm looking at one of the many cameras. <laughs> but my boss, that one? Okay. my boss <laughs> and the, our CFO are like really really good. And so our writers, we went into this thing where they didn't like what our writers were doing, and they're like, God, "Did you look at this?" And they're making fun of me. And I said, I, I sat them both down one at a time and said. Just so you know, I'm never reading it. And if I did, I wouldn't know the difference in good or bad. And to them, that's shame. They're just like, how are you just telling me that and you're okay with it? And I said, you just got to talk to my people who do that. Directly. I'm not, I'm not good at it. Yeah. And I'm cool with that. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I don't feel bad. Right. I'm just really not good at this. It takes me a lot of energy to write a lot and I can do it. Right. You're capable. But it's not, it's not my best time use at all. Yeah. So, so you talked about the three food groups and I was just riffing off of broccoli and tea, which right. I see visibly are what we talked about. But let me break that down. So you got steak, right? which is the good stuff. Things you love. Things, things you, you love. love doing. Things you love. Shouldn't eat it all day, but, but things you love. Yeah. You got broccoli, which is the, the things necessary. Things you have to do. Yeah. To do your job. This is good for you. And then so you everyone have, has a broccoli, like I'm going to, as you're developing your skill mm -hmm. set or I'm going to try this for a while. I'm going to do this for, you know, there's always broccoli, but knowing whether you're allergic to a food group is really then important. Then that's the peanuts. Mm -hmm. uh, or so what are you, because everyone's allergic and it's not a shaming thing. And it's not like people put tons of effort in their work day trying to fix that they don't eat peanuts or they do eat them and they're killing them and they're and dying and they're wondering why they hate work. It's like, stop eating peanuts. How can leaders help become the person to champion them away from the things they're allergic to? I think it's conversations. And, and I use that language a lot because you'll hear 
folks that work for me say, well, this is my broccoli, you know, <laughs> and they'll say it. And I'm like, I'm going to start oh, using that too. I made that happen. Yeah. But, but, um, but knowing that conversation of, do you think this might be peanuts? And it's so releasing when you know you're mm. not getting released from the company for this. You're not doing a bad job. Let's find someone who loves peanuts. Well, there can't be. They're, peanuts almost kill me. No, no, people love peanuts. People do. Peanut butter is fantastic. Right. Uh, no they're offense. Just, they're <laughs> You're so ready for promotion of product. I'm just telling you. Ready. ready. Oh, man. You're ready. Is it GIF or is it GIF? <laughs> Look at this. I didn't even tell him to cut to this. He knew. I didn't even tell him to cut. He knew. I know. Anyway, it's fine. Oh, know. my I, gosh. I don't know if we mentioned the book, but, but I'm This is going promote. very well. I, if I, you I, haven't bought this book, amazing. Changed my life. Never read it. Never read David, but, but just read. having it and doing this, do it to others. Love as a business strategy. This makes me feel very uncomfortable. Good, I like that. And I like being uncomfortable. Oh, good. It's it's the best place to be. In my opinion, it's the safest place to be is being uncomfortable. Well, there you go. Do you agree with that? No. Okay, tell me why you don't agree with that. Um, if I was in a furnace and I was, it was my house. Okay, furnace. never mind. We're cutting. <laughs> Cut. Um, <laughs> Producer Shelby, I wanted to cut to you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any uh, comments or questions or emotional outbursts? Still waiting on some comments, questions, emotional outbursts from no, the audience. No so definitely cares. tune in. Nobody. Um, but nobody I, wants I did to... have a question for you, oh, David. Good. Good. Um, yeah. yeah, as you know, I'm in marketing, and you as may CMO, work in a group. you are our fearless leader. I'm and, not fearless, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, something I want to ask. So uh, we we feel this way a lot. You know, there's the people who say, "Oh, I'm," you know, "we know we're creatives, or we fancy ourselves creatives." Um, but then we interact with a lot of people who often say, oh, I'm not creative. I can't do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you still bring them to the table and, and have, be able to foster that conversation between those two types of people? Everyone is creative, which right. is interesting. They don't know it. And, and that's, that's actually another root of whenever they drew something and someone said, that doesn't look like an elephant or whatever. You're no longer an artist. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like the, there is a fear of rejection that carries with mm -hmm. people. So... When people, they, if you ask them, do you listen to music? Nope, hate music. Do, have you ever seen art? Yep, it's stupid. You know, they don't say that because, <laughs> because they That's actually true. are. They love art. And, mm -hmm. and I think when it, what you have to be good at is bringing people to something. So, so helping them to experience something um, that is creative. So you can inspire them. Mm. But it's really, it's really about being good at understanding the person you're with. What do they like? Mm -hmm. You know, if we want to tell them what we like, you know, whatever it would be, here's my favorite band. And they're like, yeah, I, I like the opposite. But it's, but it's more what do you, It's more when you're about someone. Mm -hmm. You can draw them in and inspire them. And they, they all want to be inspired. They all buy things off of commercials that, that move them or things they see that, so they, they have something. Right. So it's really more about being about the person you're talking to than, than yourself. And that you can draw them into creative things. People love creative things. They get moved. They get excited. Um, but they're, they're, some of them are just burned from different things. Sometimes mm -hmm. marketing, they'll be like, you don't understand my business, so right. I'm not <laughs> even, you know, you're stupid. You know, whatever <laughs> they've decided. I'm sick of people coming in and you don't even know the words that I'm talking about. So the secret is always to learn a bit more and be curious. You can always ask. Mm -hmm. um, but if you try and fake it, it doesn't work. So it's one of those being curious, caring about them, working out what they like. I love to take people off, off the subject. Uh, anything. Like, what's your favorite movie, you know? But, uh, that's my most telling question. You asked me that in my uh, first, my interview for <laughs> this job. At I don't remember what, what you said. Shelby, what's your what favorite was movie? It? What was uh, it? Moulin Rouge. Is Moulin Rouge, oh. the colors. I, I know. Yeah, that's, that's, a good, good. that's a good choice. She's a romantic, yeah. <laughs> Did David, you know all the songs yeah. in Moulin Rouge when you watched it? Or were you they know, some of them like, I don't know what this is, but I like it? I hate to say there were a lot of songs because it came out when I was five years old that yeah, I learned from Moulin Rouge first there and then later... Um, yeah. Like smells like Teen Spirit. Sorry, Nirvana. You I had to learn know. that later. Yep. Well, one of them, you know. <laughs> I did admit it. <laughs> anyway, yeah. terrible. Almost went down there into we can, a sad story. We can dive. We can dive into that. Um, no. no, but that's cool. So, but I, but I do think what what I learned about you from that, right? Immediately, you know, creative flair, romantic. You you get those things from, and you ask people why, and because it, it's the first thing that comes to their mind. The ones who there's the calculators. What's your favorite movie? Oh, 
mm, I can't tell them that, you know. And then they go through the because uh, your gut, Susan your Kane. gut response. They try to make the smart <laughs> what response? Yeah, okay. the, the, what's a smart movie? You know, but but it's really getting people to feel comfortable enough. They just give you the answer because then they go, oh, shouldn't have said that. Mm-hmm. A guy said Cinderella once, and I was like, oh, wow, huh. That is telling. Did not expect Cinderella. <laughs> yeah. That was an interesting one. I had lots of questions. Yeah, but maybe absolutely. He's in his shoes. But, like, yeah. yeah I don't know. Sneakerhead. I did say it in interviews, probably don't want to say that in the future. I don't know if it'll go well. <laughs> but, I mean, it was cool, but I was like, yeah, I don't know. I, I love it, but not sure everyone would. I, my, my father uh, passed away a few years ago, and oh, his, his question that he would ask everyone when he was interviewing that we've brought into our company as well, this, this company that I work for now. Uh, is if you could be any t- a piece of furniture, <laughs> what would you be and why? That's and it was such a strange uh, question. But it's, it's why is because people have to think differently and explain right. themselves in terms they're not familiar it's with. It's abstract. It's but different. It's, but right? it's out of their gut. It right? is. Yeah. So, and I think that's learning. But I'll often, if I'm meeting someone, look up their name mm. and see what it means, especially if it's different. I'm like, what does it mean? And often people don't know. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. or mi- some something about their last name, or so my middle name is Scottish because I have Scottish relatives. That's it's, a funny name, it's, Scottish. Yeah, Frank Scottish <laughs> Frank is Scottish. my middle name. Yeah. It's actually Erskine. Um, Erskine. Erskine. That's good. And then my last nice, name is Italian. Well, nice location. So there you go. There's a bridge there. And yeah. I, and and funny fact, my Twitter handle is Erskine. And so what'll usually happen is things happening in that area of uh, Scotland. Get I'll get covered. tagged in. Not a lot good happens there. There's been some fun runs. Oh, that's true. There have been some fun sorry, runs. Sorry about that. Uh, Didn't mean to offend you. It's okay. I just want to let you know. I'm going to gonna give it to the town as, uh, as a yeah. gift later yeah. on. I wanted to ask you as we get closer to what is an incredible conversation, wrapping. Is it coming? It's close, but oh, okay. not yet. Yeah. I want to ask you what, the big, what, the, what is the biggest leadership myth that exists today that you think is kind of pervasive in our culture and society that needs to be, mm. that needs to be talked about, that needs to be ad- addressed. Leadership myth. Now you, you sound mm. like you have an agenda there. I'm trying I actually to do not have an agenda. I just You're thought thinking of, it. of something, but no, 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 not, um, not really leadership myths. Um, I think the myth is that what you do is important. Okay. Hold I on. You just, a- yeah. So you said what you do is important is the myth. Yeah. Okay. Can you please unpack that? Because I am very excited to hear what this means. Are you? Yes. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because um, most of the time people think that th- what they do is who they are. I know. And it's not. No, it's, I think people, people get really lost on what people think about them. And they think that that's when you're leading. That's what people need to know is that you are the leader and you've done this thing and you've got and you've got something to share and you're and and it, it limits you down to you and the best leading is leading a group of incredible people to do incredible things which means you're not that important and so it's really key that your job is to make them important and help them grow to be everything they're meant to be or you really are not going to ever get anywhere how do you push the ego down or the 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 part of you that says but then do I not get to earn as much? Do I not get to be? <laughs> so funny. People get driven by that. Absolutely. And I mean, you, and I think that's sort of it, like one of the media. The, I think, I mean, if there was a recommendation, it was on, on life and money and like make enough and then relax, you know, make sure you can take care of yourself and your family and everything else is just doesn't matter that much. Mm. And then you will get more, but not not because you clamored for it. Because it's not, if you're trying to get for yourself and you're trying to get recognition, you're trying to feel important, you're trying to feed off of your job, you'll never be great. You'll always just be you, which isn't much. It's enough, but it's not not a big deal. So how do we get to great? I think it's just other people. It's uh, it's thinking about others and growing things, knowing your strengths and weaknesses, mm. growing others around you, being obsessive about things, working out what you're obsessive about. I don't I don't think you can generalize, but but I have things I obsess about that that I, and one is people that I want people to cuz I people will amaze you, you know. Mm. It's like it is just that we're in the middle of watering plants every day. 
and which I've never done in my life other than when I had to as a kid. But David, just for the record, does not read or water plants. I don't. I or write. Or write. That's right. But you do drive. I do sometimes. My sometimes car, your sometimes. car drives for you. Yeah, I got one of those. David's just going to float at yeah, some point in time. Yeah, just, if I could. Yeah. But, um, but I, I think when you watch um, a, a fruit come or a, out, of a, out of a branch or, or, out of the, or a seed turn into a, a plant quickly, mm. it's surprising. It doesn't, I mean, you know it's coming. You hope it's going to go well. Yeah. But it, the human beings are like that. You get them planted right, you water them. You'd be surprised what these little seeds can become. You know, it's just human beings that you don't know what they are. Um, but when you try and get them in the right environment, it's just the biggest joy in the world. And the more you do that, it's much better than you. It's just Focusing watching you. other people, yeah. you know, really find their place. Yeah, I love it. Never ends the, the how impressive people can be. Mm -hmm. What? Can oh, I chime in real Shelby, quick with an audience producer, question? Yep. No. I'm, I'm here, I'm here to chime. represent the audience. So David said no. i got to help <laughs> him out. You hear that, David? David I'm a bad man. Like... Everyone look at the bad man. Okay, hey, I'm on. fighting for Joe Riley's question here. Do it. So Come on, Joe Riley. Hey, Joe, what's up? <laughs> um, so uh, he asked, is there a leader that you admire or admired that uh, you hope to be one day? What was it about this person? Yeah, there were, there were people. There were people early on um, that, that astounded me and how they treated me. So Maury Jakes was one who really just, I couldn't, I couldn't, that that feeling of coming from Scotland, having nothing, and someone, like he traveled with me for three years, like every trip. And and I said that to him, and he was the guy when I said, you were my mentor, he's like, he's that's like, ridiculous. That <laughs> and, but he was, they were so focused on words, but, but it was so sweet. And into his retirement, I've stayed in touch. He's his 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 mind isn't working like it used to, but um, but but that staying connected and seeing I, I know I remember old, old chairman before he died calling calling me you know two weeks before and just said hey I got some advice for you and oh yeah what is it and he goes don't get old it sucks <laughs> I was like thanks thanks, thanks for buddy. your advice but these were people who who they maybe at the start of their life weren't giving back much but as they progressed were just really wise people who wanted to tell you things about you hmm. and um i've been inspired by that more than people who speak on stages or have done great things but the ones who are close to me who impacted my life i want that for other people mm -hmm. I, I was really i wouldn't be here i wouldn't have enjoyed life as much as i did without that input i have a another uh, another comment that i want to turn into a question all right um, and I think it's a good follow-up to that. Okay, so we'll see. Maybe. Uh, Tanya, who commented earlier about uh, the fire repartee that we had going <laughs> now on. Now she but, knows you're going to bring it up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she said, uh, commented that she wishes she had a David in her life and that it was great listening to the story. So I wanted to pose the question, what 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 advice would you give to someone? Like, how would they find that how person? Do you find how can people? they seek out their David? They exist always. Mm -hmm. I don't believe there's ever, everyone gets into this. Cause you can mentally, and this is back to when I worked for the CEO first, it's a mentality where you start going, oh wait, they do exist. Once you say it to yourself, as opposed to saying to yourself, I can't find anyone like mm. that. Mm. They don't exist. Well, they do. Um, they'll be different, they'll surprise you, but, but, but looking for people you just like how they are, there's something about them. And you'd be amazed, people, I, I'll have, well, maybe I shouldn't say this in public, but I meet lots of people when they ask. Like I'll have randomly LinkedIn people like, yeah, let's let's go for coffee. Most I'm like, no. Mostly I'm telling them I'm not a CIO, leave me alone. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> true. But, but, I, but there are people out there, like you can ask people in any position and they can say no. Like, could we get together? Um, I think it's good. I think you find them, you can see people in your life, you have them. Um, and I think it's really just being aware and looking out for them and you will, they exist, they exist out there. I think it's also that, that openness to see yourself as someone who can improve, right? right? So having that self-awareness of knowing I need to be yeah. actively seeking. Change, change is a must for all of us. And I yeah. think I, annually at the end of the year, I actually write out lists because people are always shocked by how much I do. I run a nonprofit, got two jobs, you know, all sorts of other things, family and life. But at the end of the year, I, I cut things always. 
Like, uh, and I had someone last year help me with my purpose, which was really good. Got me down to the five things that 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 really drive me, and that helped me to make some decisions last year. But I, but always cutting off things and questioning why you do things. <laughs> Sometimes you do things for the wrong reasons, and so you're, it's your ego that you're trying to feed instead of just some self care and take things off your list. But but balance, time, getting time to you know to rest well, you know, being purposeful in your rest. Um, I think all of that, all of that works. We have a couple minutes before we close. Yeah. And there's there's two questions I want to ask you. The first is, okay. what does what what is innovation? Like we've, this is the innovating teams webinar. We literally haven't brought the word up, which mm. is my bad. Um, bad. I'm embarrassed. I, you you. Sh- I, we all, we all are. Producer Shelby the most. <laughs> so I'm wondering from your perspective, Shelby's like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really what is, am. what does innovate? What is innovation? Oh, I thought you would know. Anyway. I'm looking for the answer. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, it, it's not something, it's discovery. It's not something you do. I think it's already there. It's just going after it. It's pursuing different. And and that's usually where innovation is, is, is different things are out there. It's the same with people and things. And if you think I'm making innovation happening happen, I'm an innovator, you will you will not have much impact on the world. If you think there's stuff out there, this world needs something, what is it? Mm. You know, then you find things because you're you're a part of a story. You're not the story. I like that. And my second question is, tell us about your nonprofit. Oh, um, joinredm.com. So Red Join M, Red M. Okay. is, uh, it's all professionals giving back to help survivors of sex trafficking. So could have done a whole show on that. But we could have, and we, yeah. we need, you might still. We might, uh, we yeah. need to. So there's a, and if you're in Houston, August 9th at a second cup at 5.30, volunteer informational people we just do events we do about 14 events a year right now where we just gather and do things that are fun yeah but to bring awareness and help people who are getting out of that life Mm -hmm. it's incredible thank you for that um and as we've talked about coffee you're drinking tea i don't drink coffee you don't drink coffee but you go to coffee shops i do a second cup is a great coffee shop it's my third favorite mug that i own currently yeah there you go um second favorite is my um it's like a little we don't have to talk about it. Yeah. But it's third favorite on the list. I have about 300 coffee cups from Starbucks around the world. So I did you drink coffee. Those. Yeah. It was an illness. Them. I stopped. It was an illness. Yeah, yeah. Over my whole career. Yeah. It's incredible. It's not. It's a box. Multiple boxes now. But You should just give them away. I should give them away. That'd be kind of fun. There you go. Like a raffle cup. off. You want a Norway? Here it is. You want yeah. a Scotland? It's just gray. Oh, it's not that. It's like eras of cups. So it's like, here's the Norway from. Oh. Yeah. That's next level. It's it's no, it's not well. <laughs> well, everyone, I we're so thankful that you joined us today. I am eternally grateful for internally? Internally, externally, eternally. Wow. That's a lot grateful of for it's a lot of it. It's just my whole being That's and soul yeah. forever. That's a lot of appreciation. Um for you opening up your space for us. Yeah. This is a production suite. Yeah. Can you go full wide? Can we do the full like the God cam? This is <laughs> This is Godcam. This, this is, is this is at NOV's offices. Yeah, one our, of NOV's offices our, here in in Texas. Our innovation center. Your innovation center. We don't so call it that, but. look at how innovative this is. Yeah, literally, we're hosting an innovating teams webinar in an innovation center. Boom. Who would have thought? As always, thankful to our sponsors, Liquid Death, Murder Your Thirst. It is just water, everyone. Please don't freak out in the comments. Um, David. Yes. Thank you for your time. Thank this has you. been extraordinary, and I loved it. And Thank lastly, you. I know you've repped the book a few times, but we do have a um, a chance for you to own a copy as well. I think we have the QR code. You want to th- throw the QR code up? Um, he showed the back of the book, which did, is the it? ISBN and some I some thought nice you'd have things. the QR here, but you didn't. No, no, no. no. I'm so disappointed. So we're going to have the QR code up. If you want to scan that QR code, you can register for a free copy of the book, uh, register to win one, and we'd love to share our message of love as a business strategy. We'd love to give it away as much as possible. Um, and again, thank you for the time, and thank you all very much for joining us for our Innovating Teams webinar. Thank you.